A lot of Fords here today. There's probably nobody watching this channel who hasn't looked at this a million times, eh? The 70s Ford Dash. We were getting a lot of questions about whose nice truck is in the background, because it's obviously not mine. This is the Agent 900 uh, quick overnight 20 year uh, Ford <laughs> truck project, eh? Yeah, just that, you know. Just a quick light tidy. Where we've managed to save the door from the original truck. Six trucks. Six trucks put together, but the original engine, original frame, and original driver's door with the original <laughs> serial number on the door still. There we go. With the original pop rivets. Yeah, unaltered. Unaltered. Cab mm -hmm. is one. Box is two. two boxes. Hood. Hood is car basher. Both fenders. fenders are car basher. used car basher. Two different trucks. Grills original. Grills original. Bumper original. Original. Yeah. A nice little bend in it from pushing hay bales around. Yep. Yeah. Oh, remind me, I'll put up a picture of what it looked like when you bought it here. Yeah. Complete with uh, Isn't it it's strange how we knew how to do that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was way better. Well, it, uh, the engine got built, what, 10 years ago? About so, that. Anyway. Uh, yeah, so it's just here for final detailing. Gary's not happy with the coil wire and some of the other wires, so we'll sort that out. But uh, 302, two barrel. Uh, is it a three plus one? You don't really use first in this transmission, do you? Yeah. So it's no. a four speed, but you don't really use first. Granny. It's a granny. Old truck's been going over pretty thoroughly. It's a great looking truck. Yeah, they are. Yeah. These were used to be so everywhere, you never even that's looked right. at them. No, that's what's so you never cool. even looked at them. They were just just everywhere so we had to make it out of a bunch of trucks and uh, you know for painting it in pieces and then putting it together we got away with it but we weren't trying to make a showpiece nope. just supposed to look like a right off the lot farm truck from the 70s it's gonna get used as a truck and it's gonna get used every day just supposed to look like we've gone down to the Ford dealer and Bought the cheapest V8 four speed plastic floors, no air, no tilt, no power steering, no power brakes. Right? Farmer spec. This is like the turn up the base episode of the year, man. Pretty base, eh? This hey? thing is super base, yeah. It's about as base as it could be. Well, it's not six cylinder. Well, that's, that's true, but, but that's not uh, be silly. <laughs> that would be silly, right? Uh, yeah, base hubcaps, no stripes. Was the custom the cheapest one? I think so. Because there was the Lariat and all those other yeah, ones. Sure, they would have had, yeah. And it's an F100, not an F150. So this was slightly lighter springs and more car-like to drive, I guess. Look at that. Just acres of Rangoon Red, hey? <laughs> Everybody remembers Rangoon Red. It was still available in 73. Wow, great lighting for a great color. Not even a slider, you cheap bastard. Nope. Nothing, eh? Nope. You got electric wipers, so you're one up on me. <laughs> <laughs> they work, I had to use them today. Nice that these are not reproduction panels. There's none on this thing. It's all Ford sheet metal. We didn't even put floors in this, did we? Nope. No? Nope. This was a cab that That's... we found that was kind of dented up but it was really solid and then the box we got from Ken Matt Hot from Strong's Garage his dad Ken has his box laying around in the backyard so we bought that off him and it got some mild rust repairs an excellent tailgate from the chunk yard that's the hardest thing to find is a good tailgate look at how nice that is and uh, yeah couple of coats of urethane 
no clear coat, nothing fancy, just a truck paint job. And probably something we should take for a drive. Let's take the 73 F100 for a drive. Hey, Gary, somehow, being the only one of us, other than me, to, uh, oops, guess you should put it in gear. I'm such an ace. Gary managed to not succumb to too much cam syndrome, and the thing actually starts. And idle's nice. I gotta close that door, holy. Oh, reverse is like a double granny, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's barely yeah, no, moving. Can't go in a hurry. Got so, does it feel like 2003 all over again? 2000. That's when you bought this. Yes. 2003. Well, I bought the door in 2003. Didn't you drive it home though? Yep. As I recall, it had a miss though. Right. It didn't run very well, but it actually drove itself here. Yep. In 2003. Yep. Long before I didn't even have a shop. I was just working junkers out of the barn. I think. Yeah, we did. We did most of it all outside. Yeah, we did a lot of the body work outside and painted it in the barn, right where the Chevy sits now. Everything so look at that, full gauges. Everything works. Everything working. kind of forget how old this is because you don't you forget how old you are yeah because we used to drive for well you had one that's was part of the thing with this project yes. was that Gary had one of these when I first met him we were about well, you were 16 I was 17 yeah and you had just gotten he had a baby blue one of these that was my grandpa's and uh, and yeah it was pretty clean and it had a 360 FE in it, yeah. yeah. And, uh, but it was base as well, so that's why when yeah, I decided it was basic, to do another yeah. one, I wanted it exactly the same base. Except red. Except red, because the blue was, yeah. yeah. The blue was not, it was okay. It was like a baby blue. And, uh, yeah, you had that for years. Yeah. And in the meantime, they've gotten pretty scarce. Yeah, these like were we used to school. go to the junkyard. Well, even when we started this in 2003, yeah. we were still going to the junkyard and getting clean fenders and clean hood. Yeah, yeah the whole bottom of the truck's painted. It's uh, it's completely done. And I think something that everybody should keep in mind when they take on <laughs> fixing up their old high school car is it might take 20 years yeah, hopefully not but hopefully not but sometimes happens, it does right? yeah but how many 20 year projects actually get finished not very many, not very, many. very it wasn't really see. 20 years it was more like four years stop for oh six. yeah sure but 20 yeah. years from the time you bought it yeah, yeah. like to, to yeah. keep the goal in mind for just to not have it become something that you decided against, like to actually always intend to finish and actually finish. Right. It doesn't even matter if it took 20 years because here it is on the road. And it drive, you totally forget that this is just put together when you're driving it. Like it's instantly, it's instantly been this its whole life. You know? Yeah. It, it does not feel like something, of course, you know, part of those years is dialing in all the gauges and dialing in the steering and the brakes and the new tires and new fuel tank, a lot of cleaning, and new upholstery, new rubber mats. And, oh, you've got a headliner. That's original. No. That's new? That's or just hardboard painted. Yeah. But that's all they were. Right? Yeah, that's all they were, yeah. yeah. Nice. We got a nice sunset. And this is a real Western Alberta moment here. Taking the F100 out for a rip. Oh, it pulls really good. It sounds good. The seats are so nice, eh? It's pretty comfy. You forget about how hard seats 
seats are in modern cars. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny, we do these videos of driving whatever cars my friends have, and I basically use it all as like a soapbox to hate on modern cars. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't matter what I'm driving. It's your soapbox and you're allowed to stand yeah, that's right. how the more base it is, like if it's really basic, it says deluxe yeah, sorry. or custom, custom in this case. Custom, as in nothing at all. Well, so and it's got a radio, so true. It does have that. But I do have the delete plate. I might put it in. Might have to put it in. It's like company policy now. Yeah. When I was a kid, this thing felt so big. Yeah. When I was driving today, I just realizing like even the mini cars are like bigger than me. They Remember when HVAC back was like two sliders and a fan? <laughs> There's no touch screen. See what I mean? Well, all of this still works. Yeah. All right, there you go. There's your HVAC. Hey, look at that. I didn't have to select any menus. Notches though. Oh, it, oh yeah, it's got two notches. <laughs> nice. And cup holders. <laughs> you gotta have your cup holders because that's going to keep your coffee from spilling. Yeah, we sprayed a lot of Rangoon Red. Yes. Gosh, everything, eh? Like, nice thing about the old stuff. It's just bare metal everywhere. Yep. It's funny, eh? You go full circle. <laughs> In the end, if you get old, you just watch the shit you had when you were a kid. Like, that was the best truck I ever had. Damn it, I didn't care at the time. Now, this is it. You're never selling this. No. This is a keeper. Yeah. Don't anybody, I know we already had offers, but it's not for sale. Don't try. Uh, it cost you 20 years of my life back. Yeah, that's right. Nobody's given Gary that back, so. They better be a better 20 than the last one. Yeah, that's right. Part of the reason this took 20 is there was some for some fucking rough terrain in there. Yeah, I'll give you, I'll give you one guess. <laughs> I think that's good, eh? Looks nice. There. Just another quick flip. <laughs> Bad cut. <laughs> yeah, that's a nice truck, dude. He's back and he's brought us a something couple. decidedly classier than the rest of the shit around here. <laughs> I wouldn't say that. But. Wow, that is lovely. And all right, we'll see you next week. Yeah. And that's we're about back. all I know how to say about watches. Wow, that's a beauty. Look at all those shiny parts. Mm -hmm. That thing is a 1920 Father Time from Elgin. It's one of their top line models. Frankers, out of the Frankers garbage. is eating the garbage. Okay, carry on. So this one is, I believe it's a 23 joule, yeah. No, 21 joule. 21 joule watch. Made 1920. And one of their the one of their better models. That Needed a hell of a lot of work to get it running beautiful. again. Oh yeah, this was a basket. Oh, it was a basket, yeah. Somebody had uh, like the balance shaft had uh, had been broken. So what they did is they, they gutted the upper upper jewel in that mm. and then put a blind jewel, like one of the ones that is um, off the off um, pallet forks, 
in there to, to build up the distance and then it would kind of just limp it wouldn't mm -hmm. do anything so mm -hmm. had to replace both the jewels because they were both all cracked and um, put a new balance into it it's a little happier it's not too bad it's, yeah the, the hairspring could probably use to be replaced i don't have any of those wish my hair would spring Whoa. anyways <laughs> yeah, color commentary tonight with Dean. With Dean. <laughs> Classic watch expert Dean. Yeah. So that's oh. actually known as a Canadian style dial because it's got the 24 hour increments oh, on yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And apparently only Canadian market watches, or initially Canadian market watches, had that. And where was the actual. The company is in the US. The company is in the state. And so this was almost like an export. Yeah. Interesting. So you the, don't know any history beyond that, though. Not much, no. Other than the Dayton. Pretty no, I don't know anybody. You know, like who would have owned yeah, it or yeah, anything like that. I bought it as a as a piece of shit. So. Save from the crusher. Save from the crusher. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't it just amazing? That is a 1915 Waltham Seven Jewel wristwatch, and it's designed to be a wristwatch. It's one of the very very early earliest wristwatches. The uh, production number on the on the watch is 1915, and the hallmarks on the case lid that you can see over here are for oh there we are yeah are for Birmingham and 1915, and the maker of the case is Denison, who used to actually work was one of the founding partners of the Waltham Company in the U.S., but he moved back to England and started up his own case making company. That's a deliberate. Is this a watch. nice original or a restored? It's uh, probably been restored. It's been cleaned. Mm -hmm. um, but it's all the original parts and it's the original case. Yeah. Nice. Um, and the original? Original glass. I put a new crystal on it, but it, the crystal that I had was 100 years old. It's all NOS. Nice. Beauty, eh? Wow. Yeah. Beautiful. Classic timepieces, man. Wow. That <laughs> is a beauty. Very lovely. And the strap, and that is a knockoff of the original design that somebody would have bought, let's say, in 1915. That's cool. Has very wide. You don't see that now because we're from Saskatchewan. Like the looking at the fonts, mm -hmm. like all oh, the six is missing, but you see the nine's not closed. No, it's man. definitely Art Nouveau. Yeah. Yeah. This was an infantry. Yeah. Yeah, that would have been somebody from, well, probably maybe a junior officer or something like would have been able to buy the silver because it was a bit more expensive mm -hmm. than a regular nickel case. But Denison made them also in nickel cases. So the average soldier could go and buy one. This was a better, this was actually a better quality watch than the uh, Rolex of the period. Um, the initial Rolexes were, yeah, they were a cheap Swiss make. Hans Wolsdorf was the was the. Of course, Hans. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this is what people feel like when we talk about cars. Yeah, yeah. that's how when me and Brooke Stevens went down to the yeah. strippers. But he was a marketing genius, and that's what Rolex was all about: is marketing. Oh yeah, Rolex Davidson. <laughs> Actually, not too far off. Wolsdorf and Davis. W oh okay. D. Oh, you can't I even joke about it. Don't right. make jokes about Wolsdorf. <laughs> <laughs> this is how we're going to grow the channel, guys. <laughs> that's sweet. Yeah, yeah, like wow, that's cool. Thanks for bringing these by. Uh, oh, do you have any spare change? Oh, what would you like? Uh, oh, I don't know. Yeah. I need about a day's wages, so I got a time machine. <laughs> I got to go back to about uh, just before the birth of Christ. Quite a set, bit before. Can you, fill, can you set me up? Oh, wow. There you go. Oh, here's a denarius. Sweet. <laughs> Yeah. Now, now I can wash my Oldsmobile when I get there. Yeah. I don't know if they'll make change for that. There's the old bastard himself. Oh, uh, actually, that's probably Nikkei. Because the I, thing is, on the I other side, yeah, yeah. the other side has the quadriga, the, yeah. the, the, the four horses. And yeah, yeah, the four horsemen of the apocalypse. How appropriate for the year 2023. <laughs> hey. Wait, who's this guy again? This uh, one is from 206 to 195 BC. And what does it say down there? Roma. It should Roma. say Roma. Yeah, 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 okay. So that's Roman yeah, and that's attributed that's to Scipio. Uh, it's obviously Rome was who I found out Who I found out was actually brutally murdered today, so... Oh, I was waiting for a peanut butter reference. <laughs> Scipio. <laughs> peanut butter. <laughs> he was murdered. Recently. 
<laughs> Recently, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Turned out he made it to the ripe old age of 2,400 years. Yeah. And then he was murdered. And then he was murdered. The poor bastard. Yeah, he murder. had yeah. fucking running shoes on and that was it. Yeah. Nikes, yeah. The other yeah, one. He said I needed to buy an Oldsmobile and it's 300 years before Christ. <laughs> There we go. The yeah. old lady herself. That's actually, I don't even know if I can pronounce this right. Dionysus. Oh, Dionysus. Yeah, Dion Dionysus. Dionysus, yeah, sure. Um, sure. That is the goddess of uh, wine. Well, that's appropriate oh, for this place. Good, yeah. Okay, and that came from um, Marionea, which was under Roman rule at the time. And it was, and it's now in Bulgaria. That's where the city is actually located. It's still there. They still make wine. The reverse side there that you're looking at has got Dionysus standing left with two Narwex, Narth, Narthex wands, whatever the fuck they are. They didn't cover them up. And of course, it's in Greek. Wow. So that's hand hammered. The original shape would have been a ball, and it would have been pulled out of a furnace hot, and then they would have stamped it right like that. And that's the very tail end of the Greek classical period. So that's why the design on it is as uh, intricate as it is. You know, it's almost like a modern coin. That's sweet, yeah. And then over Except the... that modern coins are garbage and worthless. Yeah. <laughs> and that's good silver. <laughs> yeah. That's gorgeous, yeah. That is amazing. And having seen some of your other coins, way newer than this, would have a lot more wear on them. Yeah. This has survived somehow. Yeah. Do you have a shipwreck salvage company? <laughs> I've got a couple of shipwreck coins, but... Uh, oh, yeah? Wow, yeah. really? Well, Dean has a couple money? of shipwrecks that he drives around. <laughs> Evening, people. I uh, have prepared the fender over here so that we can go ahead and protect the fender before we get it fitted on the car and get it all welded up. See the inside here of Scott's repair. I just put a little self-etch primer on there. I don't want any surface rust to start on that or anything until we're done. Oh no, this is a, a weldable primer, right. Primer sealer here. Part A, part B. And all I'm gonna do is just brush that on. A couple of reasons, give one coat, nice thick coat. Uh, it's going to be inside. Nobody's going to see it. So the finish really doesn't matter that much and I don't want too much spraying go on when I've got this guy sitting here hardening up. First coat on. Kind of slopped a little extra up inside and it's slowly dripping out again. I want to get right to the top side of this fender and once that dries it'll be ready to accept that top coat. Okay, we're all ready to go. Got some red mixed. This is all nice and dry to the touch. Uh, I think I only had to give it half an hour between coats, but it could be a little cool in here, so I gave it an hour. And uh, yeah, we're ready to go spray some or brush some red on there. So then, you know, like the finish that brush leaves, obviously, but overall, uh, that's a great fender, well protected, ready for some summer cruising. Another day, I just had to do a couple little touch-ups on the fender where primer had bled through the tape. Hey guys, I uh, had a little time today, so I got out here and I put some work into the trunk lid on the Fury. Uh, I don't know if I updated you on things. The Fury's coming back together. We got the fender hanging on there right now. Just kind of thrown on there for now. And as you can see, the hood is not set up very well, but it's back on there, out of my way. And so I threw some time into the trunk lid. It was a little pitted, so I just put a little bit of fiberglass over top of the pitting. No holes to really deal of. And, um... That looks all dry now, so I can go ahead and buzz that, clean that up. 
And if all goes well tonight, I will have that in paint. See how well I do. Okay guys, I've got the trunk lid all prepped. Ready to go for some paint. Looks pretty good to me. Pretty solid trunk, surprisingly. Looks like it was replaced earlier off of another car. You can see the black paint underneath where I've sanded through in a few areas. I think it'll turn out great. It's going to be nice to see it all shiny again. Just waiting for the furnace to shut off. And we are ready to go. Okay, so I picked up my brakes from Edmonton Brake today. I'm just gonna spray bomb these in quickly and get back to working on the trunk of the Fury today. Okay, big day guys. I did a little cleaning in the trunk there and uh, prepared it for paint. Uh, I had previously done some patches in the corner right around here. Uh, they turned out okay but not great. And over in this corner as well. And I just wanted to clean them up, stick a little glass over the welds just to stop any porous areas from allowing shit into my paint. And then I just rubbed the whole thing down. So went to my first stage of epoxy primer. Then I'm going to stick some slick sand over top of all this thing, buff it down, and then go to paint. Scott had made me this rocker for it quite a long time ago and uh, the piece that Scott made is flat and the actual rocker has a pretty good curve to it so I am seeing if I can duplicate that curve and get close. Looks like I'm headed in the right direction, but I have a little more hammering to do. Okay, so after a few minutes of hammering, I've managed to put a curve in that rocker panel, uh, definitely within a sixteenth of an inch, so shouldn't have any problem. 
I'm mudding that up. That looks pretty decent to me. Gotta love the template idea. It's kind of the first time that I uh, that I've used this with Scott's tips and tricks along the way. And my hammering did get out to lunch a few times and I had to flip the panel over and straighten out a few curves. I was kind of losing the top uh, curve on the rocker. So awesome, awesome tool. Glad I used it. I've got a rocker that is going to follow the factory lines now. And I think I'm confident enough to go ahead and cut that rocker off and see how well this matches up. That was not much fun, honestly. I had to lay underneath for some of that drilling. I'm going to have to clean up some of the metal in there, obviously, and literally just clean what's inside there, because that's pretty nasty and it's not going to last for long. Here I'll have to rebuild this bracket here a little bit. And of course some of the rot on the back edge. Lost about an inch of metal there pretty awful. Pretty awful beast. New piece is going to look great. Okay, I made a patch or two on the inside and fixed the rusty spot that was there. And then I sprayed some weld weldable primer on top of there. I just really don't like bare metal. So I throw something on there. And uh, I clean this all up so that it'll primer will stick to that and I'll prime the inside. And then I'll go ahead and weld holes on this bottom edge or uh, not weld holes, drill holes on the bottom edge so I can weld it onto the body that way. Okay, rocker is all done. It's kind of a big day. Feels really good to get that all finished up. All spotted in. It, uh, it lines up very well. And I don't think we're gonna have any trouble with that whatsoever. So, uh, feeling pretty fantastic about that. That's kind of it for my weekend. Sunday's, uh, Sunday's kind of come to an end here. I'm killing myself on the trunk floor as well. Trunk floor had a bunch of pitting. I didn't really like it. So I went through and touched up a few areas, threw some slick sand at it, buzzed it down, and there's still a couple areas I didn't really like. I know I'm killing myself on an area that's going to have a mat over it and it doesn't really matter, but to me it kind of does, so... All right, take it easy. Today's uh, gig is seam sealing the inside of the wheel wells. Uh, factory was never really that careful with how they slap that stuff everywhere, so I'm not worrying about it too much. I do want to ensure that I've sealed all of my welds. So everywhere there was a join, I've put some nice thick seam sealer in there. And um, the old stuff from the factory fell out of the joins between the outer inner wheel tub and that. So I've put some new stuff in place. And then I'm going to do the same in the trunk. So I've cleaned up some of the trunk floor because there was some pitting and it looked kind of nasty. So today is just um, swiping in some seam sealer. Nothing too special. Brush on seam sealer. Seems to work great. And uh, we'll go through all of these uh, rolls or divots. Go through all that because these were, I guess, originally dipped. And after they were dipped, all of these low spots would hold seam sealer or, or whatever the rust protectant was in there. So now that I've cleaned it all out, I want to put some back in there. So I'll go through and, and that's today's project. And then uh, after that's all done, we should be ready to throw some paint in here. Alrighty, all the seam sealer is done. Sealed up the trunk. I don't know if it's going to hit any gravel roads, but if it does, I'd really like to, to see that my trunk stays clean. 
I really had to work to uh, be as sloppy as the factory. I just slopped it in there. Kind of similar to what they had done. Every seam should be sealed up now. And uh, once that dries and hardens, uh, this thing is ready for some paint. Okay, found a little more rust in the old 66 Fury. And I drew out some pieces. Kinda rough in there. What are you gonna do? It's gotta be addressed, so. A couple pieces here. They're a little bit bigger than I need them to be, so I will probably trim them down a little first before I cut those lines. I have started drilling out all the spot welds so we can kind of get that all removed from the back edge. Then I'll get in here and cut the lines once I trim the pieces and draw new lines. Trim that out. Well, with any luck tonight, we'll have that uh, fixed up by the end of the day. All right, so far so smooth, I guess. I'll spray a little weldable primer on there and just kind of protect it a little bit until I can get in from the inside and put something better in there. But uh, two big chunks taken care of. Pieces fit in there pretty nicely. And then I'll go ahead and buzz those into place. I'll check in in a few. So, uh, one more step towards putting this Fury in paint. Feels pretty good. Went ahead and ground down the back. Just put a little finishing mud in there. Sand that all down so it's going to look pretty nice. So we're getting pretty close to wrapping up the trunk. Uh, with any luck, we can buzz the last bit of the quarter panel together and uh, stick this thing in paint soon. Pretty excited. Doesn't look like it because I'm tired, but pretty excited. All right, as you can see, I just sprayed some uh, rubberized undercoating in the quarters. Get a little sound deadener out of that and also get the texture that the factory had because half of it had fallen off, if you remember, and I had to kind of glass the rest into place after I picked off all the loose stuff. That's about a can of undercoating per side. Hopefully we'll get a little insulation out of that. We get a nice texture out of that. And once that dries, uh, we're ready to clean up this trunk finally and put it in paint. And we are on day two. And while it may look dry, if I push on that hard enough, it leaves fingerprints. So it's definitely gonna take another, another day or more. Kind of frustrating. As you can see, Besides that, I'm all taped up, ready to go ahead for paint. Everything's all sealed up inside, taped off, ready to go. And I am stuck waiting on product to dry, product that should have dried in 10 minutes. So I'm going to try a trick or two tomorrow based on Scott's suggestion and a little bit of reading I've done. Uh, let's see what happens. Hopefully, uh, with any luck, I've got paint on this Saturday, maybe Sunday. Okay, so I got back early this morning. I sprayed the 3M stuff. It's supposed to, it says it actually give it an hour to dry. I gave it a couple hours. And I come back in and everything is rock solid. So that is awesome. And we are ready to go ahead with some paint. Okay, we're going to color. Moment of truth. This is pretty exciting because I've been working on this freaking trunk for, let's call it two and a half months, just to do, you know, the welding and the quarters and all that stuff to get it ready to go. So I'm pretty excited. Got the paint mixed up. Loaded. Let's see if I can lay it down without having any major screw ups. Oh. 
kind of stinky. the victor go the spoils i guess right i get to unwrap all of this and uh compare the new paint against the old crappy stuff let's get started Fantastic to me. Did a great job getting paint everywhere I wanted it. Nice and shiny red in there. Super happy with that. Man, it's been a long time getting this far. It just surprises you sometimes. I took the trunk lid off and painted it over two and a half months ago and I really didn't think it would take this long to get the trunk finished up and painted and man very happy with that it looks freaking awesome and I know even this part you're not gonna ever see it because the bumper covers it but I'll know it's shiny and red and all sealed up and it's freaking perfect. All right, I am just loving life today. Everybody, Dang. I am just, well, you know, we're getting my new mute motor. We're getting my new muter. <laughs> what do we do? What do you have to do to it, Scott? A little tidying. <laughs> we're not going to do that today. You want we to? We got to put the window back. You in want to though, eh? Oh yeah, dude, isn't that going to be fun? Oh, yeah, there goes the last right. glove. That's the, hey. you know, we needed that glove. What are you doing? <laughs> Where? Smoke <fast>. You. <laughs> <laughs> what a great Okay. No! You are just way too excited today. French fries and burgers and excellent. Oh, she's having the best time ever, man. And you're doing an interior to a six Yes, wow. yeah, so I gotta do that later today. Come on, we gotta do other stuff. We gotta do the other things. I've got the window back from the glass shop and we've got the window technician back. Yeah. Oh, that was a nice entrance there. You see that? It seamlessly. What happened? I, huh? Nothing. Now, we're going to put the window back into the 37 Chevy. So let's go get it. Oh, where is it? I don't know. Oh, shit. I'm just kidding. Oh, yeah. That sounds Right? Bad. Let's not overthink it. Okay. Window goes in car. It looks like we have some screws that have mm -hmm. to go into the window. Hmm. Four identical screws. That I'm betting is these ones here. See? Okay, can you get me a a, a flat screwdriver? And then we're going to give this a snippy. And we're done. Is that, you want to come? This? Yeah. Okay. Tape off. Roundy part that way. And yeah, probably should take all that shit off. 
<laughs> yeah, if I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty easy going. Yeah, yeah, it can stay there, but uh, no. Open the door, okay. Oh, oh, over top, okay. Got you. Okay, careful. Oops. <laughs> uh, okay, I thought you wanted to be behind you for holding the glass. Oh, that's oh, right. Oh, go, go over this way. No, yeah. it was, uh, yeah. Yeah, because you, you got this in the way. So you have to go this way. Okay. Uh, okay. How are you feeling? Start straightening it up. Here, let me just, just go like this. Yeah, just hold it up. There we go. And we're almost done. Okay. Except that I can't fucking see you. <laughs> there we go. Now I gotta. Uh, which one of these wines are up? Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna bring it up. Mm -hmm. There. Okay. Just give me one second. Yeah, yeah. Once we get a couple of screws in, it's yeah. all over. If we get one more, we're good. I'm trying to get it there. You see, I'm trying to miss that. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Go ahead. So let's just try it. Yeah, that's better. That maxed? There. Yeah. Now we're maxed. I'm now maxed. I can put this screw in. I'm so holding it up. Yeah. Hold it there. I just couldn't get at it. Can you believe it? I did it. Is that Frankers? I think so. Okay, yeah, you can let go of it. Nice. So that was the worst of it. Now we want to grease everything, so we should find the grease. And we're going to run some new grease in this channel. That's a good idea, actually, yeah. Because we want this to all work nicely. Yes. So the grease is over by the table, by the shelf where all the tools are now. Oh, okay. And I'm going to just give her a couple of practice wines here. What the Practice fuck? wines, yeah. A couple of definitely going to do that. At all. What have I done wrong? Oh, no, okay. no, Grease and... Holy Why is this so fucking garbage? What's going on here? You got your grease ready to go. Whenever you're ready. Yeah, an old rag, which is not the greatest. Yeah, we but can't it... use the grease until we can make the window go up and down. So let's right. Let's see if we've got any love. Nope. Is the glass too thick and big? No, it's just the old weather stripping is just old and janky, tired and shitty, and bunched up, you know. <laughs> Wants to bunch up when the window hits it instead of push out of the way, right? And yeah. There, once you get past that spot, it's better, but... It seems tight, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, well that's the thing, I don't want to break the window because it's too tight. Well, um, with Dean's capable help, I put the door back together. I didn't do nothing man, tonight, so... <laughs> there we go. It's, okay. uh, look at this. Ready? Remember you could barely roll it down before? Look at that. Ooh, wow, cool. Nice. Oh jeez, that's nice. Oh, it sounds nice. It sounds nice Great, and healthy. Right? And... Got yeah. the molding back on. That was harder than I thought. I did not cool. expect that to be as Sweet. much of a bastard as it was. Cool, man. But You're she's good. still all in good shape. Got all the little things with the springs and the things wow, all back on. Did. The little oh, armrests. I mean, when, when did that happen, actually? Hmm? What? When was that? <laughs> okay, one more thing off the safety fail list. Safety fail. I just spoke to our friend Mike, and he can't do the exhaust till it. 21st? What's today, Dean? The 6th of June. My Kenworth on the hogs. Are you drinking that? No. <laughs> what is you, you Did you just have a swig of Bailey's? Uh, no. No! <laughs> just... As he puts the lid back on? No. <laughs> Fuck. Right? So we can't do the exhaust. So we're going to do maybe some... I think I'll just dust some garbagey car lot touch-ups on there, hey? Just to cover up the bare metal. This is getting smaller. Oh, horn, I guess, can go back on one of these days. Got a couple of dents to do. There's a big dent in the back there. I'd like to pop that out a little bit, anyway. Yeah. And she needs to be cleaned up very carefully. Oh, and then we can do all the fun stuff. 
I got uh, lots of fun toys to put on it yet. But we're actually at a fairly close to functioning car now. Such a nice car, man. It's a doll. It's a great car. <laughs> hey guys, thanks so much for watching the show this week. Uh, we always have a great time putting it together. It's been an exceptionally busy week. Uh, we've been putting the engine together for the Model T, so we're gonna have a lot of uh, uh, action to do with that next week. And uh, I'm actually editing the video early tonight and putting it up. Possibly you might be seeing this early as I'm going on a little uh, bit of a tour with a group of people who are uh, touring uh, pre-1932 cars and I was invited so of course uh, it was very kind of those guys to include me. Well we're going to put a uh, hundred miles on the new Model T engine so I'll be putting that together for next week's video and uh, really uh, hoping and expecting that to go very well and it should be a lot of fun. So it's been a very hectic week and uh, certainly a lot more wrench spinning than I'm used to and a lot less banging and sanding. So we'll be getting, I hope, back to uh, what passes for normal around here very soon. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the show. I want to say a very special thank you to Miles and to Mark for putting together those segments with the uh, timepieces and Miles and his fury. I'll be getting everybody up to date on Laura's Rover very soon here. I uh, have been working on it. I'm really just getting that ready for uh, the prep and paint process, and then we'll get the boys over and we'll attack it. Thanks, as always, to the patrons of the show. Uh, you guys make it possible to do any and all of this, so cheers and thanks very much. Thanks also to anybody who uh, donated through uh, PayPal. That is very kind of you guys. And, of course, to people who have sent mail, we've actually filmed a bunch of mail opening. I just It takes a gigantic amount of time to edit it properly. So that will be coming soon. And uh, I think a lot more adventures this summer. <laughs> what? Oh, sorry, Frankers is making me laugh. All right, well, I better go attend to the very impatient dog. Thanks again so much. Uh, we'll see everybody very soon. And... Uh, have a great week. Bye-bye. This is a regular ah, contributor. Same old shit. <laughs>